They label me the best and I must be the best The diamond chain so icy got 30 pointers up on my chest We never stress off the bullshit, just get the money I'm from Milwaukee up in the trenches so just peep my story Get rich and die trying, I'm on my 50 cent Remember the days in high school, the teacher said I wasn't shit huh. Look at me now, look at me now I took the stairs to the top, it ain't no coming down Silk G, let's take a walk into the Hall of Fame So when I die, I want my kids in my family Yo, what's good, bro? What's good with you? Yo, I just want to uh, welcome you, obviously, to the Tom Bomb Podcast um, First, if you just want to let everybody know um, Obviously, your uh, your stage name and where you're from Yes, sir This is the one and only Silk G I represent Milwaukee, Wisconsin and uh songwriter artist amongst many other things and uh that's just what it is it's a it's a it's a pleasure to talk to you and be on the podcast and you know let the people know in your world and connect worlds and you know have an entertaining conversation i'm all in hell yeah bro i, I really appreciate you coming on uh as soon as i heard your music i fucked with it I know you've been at it uh in this industry for a long time and I'm you know glad to update my fans and get some of your fans into what I'm doing. Um so first, first thing I want to ask you bro if you just want to let everybody know um exactly where you're from and how it was growing up in your area. Sure well I'm from up north where we call it, you know it's kind of called the fourth coast because you know, you got your down south. Of course, you got your New York. You got the Mecca. And then, you know, you you, you got your West Coast and all of that. Respect to all of them. And, you know, the, the Midwest has always been, you know, a melting pot of all type of music and, you know, different variety of artists and from old to new. And it's just always been kind of the, the, the slept on place. But, you know, in, in, in the eyes of myself and a lot of other people, you know, from Milwaukee and you know, Chicago and the surrounding areas, you know, it's always been kind of a, not a chip on the shoulder, but it's like, you know, a a a, a, a badge of honor in the sense of, of letting the world know that, you know, we have something to say, you know, and, and don't forget about us and the contribution that, you know, we, we've put the music, you know, through all the different cycles of music. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. Shout out to Milwaukee, obviously. And, the South, such a, you know, a staple in hip hop. Um, so when you were growing up in your household, uh, what did you grow up listening to, like as a child? And then what, what did you switch over to once, you know, you were kind of in control of playing what you wanted to listen to? Well, you know, for me, it, it started back probably when I was about maybe, I don't know, seven or eight with the music, you know, my mom and, you know, uh, shout out to my mom and, you know, her ex-husband, they were, they were, you know, they, they like to party. They like to play their 45 records and blast their music. You know, your, your Marvin Gaye's and your, you know, your, your, your Gap bands and, you know, all your, your greats, your Whitney Houston's, your, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. Just your, your, your greats of, of the, all of the greats that, that, uh, that made a, you know, huge impact in music, you know, for me and my generation coming up. So I think for me, it started there. And then I believe maybe at 10 or 11, it had a transition where it, it really started to, to, uh, you know, hit the soul when, when, when hip hop was first started, and, you know, you had your LL Cool J's and your Run DMC's and your Rock Hymns and your EPMD's. And, you know, the, to me, that's, that's when it, it kind of set in and then, you know, starting off in high school and transitioning and doing different other things. I think I started taking it seriously in middle school, doing talent shows and then kind of picked back up after high school. Once I stopped being as popular, and you know, kind of doing my own thing and worrying about other stuff and, and not the music. And then that's where it started at for me. But it was definitely that foundation of, um, you know, starting with your old school music. And, and it just wasn't so much of hip hop, too. You know, my generation of music was also like your Phil Collins and your Cindy Lauper's. And you know what I mean? You're, it, 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 it was only Prince, Michael Jackson, <laughs> and um, maybe a couple artists that was on MTV, you know, when it first kind of yeah. started. So 
you had your your different type of Bon Jovi's and you know your your different type of um different music that kind of influenced me as a kid and just and just was kind of the start. Yeah, that that's great, bro. Um, how old were you if you remember? Um, how old were, do you think you were when you first realized like, oh, maybe I want to make music myself? And then when when was the transition? of that like maybe you were fucking around with it to to like oh I definitely want to do this maybe maybe I can do this for a career I think the transition for me was actually um cuz I started out I think probably I started like taking it serious maybe towards the late 90s you know 96 started really seriously maybe recording and then as 98 came around and the G2 a key got signed to rap a lot and then that's when it became you know, from kind of a hobby to this is real, you know, once Scarface signed and once it was the stamp on it and then once you're, you know, around um, and involved in, in, in something like that. And then that that's when it becomes like it, it, this can really happen. It's actually happening, but this is this can go from the block or just a dream or just you making music or just being creative mm. to something, you know, that could be possibly special and you know you could really do something epic you know so that's when i would say that it kind of really first started um to being just something to just do or just a hobby to making it into a reality you know so 98 99 you know and then you're you're entering your your new millennium and that's when the transition turns in from just being just a rapper to your songwriting and you know, things like that. So, but it definitely started, started with the foundation of just being a rapper and just having that passion. And then actually, you know, DJ T gray from 97, nine, the box in Houston, he actually gave me my first start as far as the exposure. And he let me do his intro for his radio station, which was the biggest radio show in Houston. So now, you know, I'm coming from the Midwest, but now I'm able to be heard in front of two or three million people, you know, every day at six o'clock for nine to 10 months strong. And that's what kind of got the bidding war, and, you know, got me kind of going because that platform right there, you know, for he, for him to let me actually do that for him and to be heard, you know, by, by that many, the masses amount of people. Cause that's when DJ screw, you know, that's when the screw culture was in. Oh, yeah. So Texas music was very different. It was kind of before your Mike Joneses and all of that. Slim Thug was probably 17 or 18, just coming up in high school because a friend of mine, Uncle Mark, he used to own a, a club in Houston called the Stallion Club on the northwest side, you know, on the north side of Houston. So back then, you know, he had Slim Thug and different artists coming to the club. So DJ T. Gray would be the DJ. So that's how we kind of got linked in with him. And, you know, it's always your networking and who you know. And boom, I just so happened to be right there at the right time and was able to get that opportunity to jump on that. And then uh, shout out to Fat Man Scoop from New York. Fat Man Scoop heard it, and he came right in the studio and jumped right on the intro. So, you know, this one, he was, you know, kind of just, you know, coming in and, 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 and having his kind of shine. So it was just being around these different greats and having Rico Ray from Organized Noise clear the record because it was a group, a group that was signed I think I'm not sure if they were signed to Babyface or the Face, or, but uh, uh, it was a group called Parental Advisory. So the the actual uh, the song that I did for the radio station it was actually uh, a single of a group that was out. So T Gray had to call and get the clearance, and it was just love. But that was kind of my first opportunity for the world to hear me, you know, on a bigger scale from just being, you know, just coming from a walk here, even being included with a G to a key and rap a lot because they had their own thing going. But I actually had to make my own name in my own way without, you know, stepping on their toes or using their relationships. And it just came off the blood, sweat, and the tears of, you know, 835 and, you know, my the foundation of my crew because some friends of mine, they went to Texas Southern down there. So they went to school down there. So it kind of made it easier when I came down and when G Money and them got signed to make the transition from Milwaukee to, you know, to Houston. So yeah, that's, no. that's kind of, that's, that's where it started. Yeah, I love the insight you're given because um, I think a lot of people, you know, maybe my fans, younger fans don't know who you are. Um, I knew who you were when you reached out. You know, you've accomplished a lot. You're asked, It's actually crazy, right? Because 
you know, you being that age and just growing up and doing your thing, like, you're just a kid, like, doing what you're doing. But, like, now looking back, it's kind of like you're you're part of, like, the history of hip-hop. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's a big thing. You know, I moved to St. Louis and connected with a lot of special artists down there and a lot of newer artists right now, you know. So shout out to, you know, everybody in the Lou, you know, from your, your St. Lunatics, your Jay Quans, your Morris Coles, you know, Sleep 4000, Decon. You know, I know all them boys down there. So I was able to transition, you know, and take from Milwaukee and kind of do the same thing down in St. Louis and have an impact down there too in Atlanta as well. So it's, it kind of, it's, it's, um, uh, it's always been a networking thing and, and, and kind of a, a respect thing and more not not so much about the music with me. It was kind of always the respect and just, you know, having having the uh the credibility about it just from the blood, sweat and tears and the sweat equity of 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 you know the working and the the grinding that I put in to just sustain it and and um still be relevant and still, you know, push it forward to to, to really get everybody to know me and know the movement. You know, I lost a, a friend of mine, you know, Money Eyes, Fat Boy Guala. He passed away in 2021. Press so I'm piece. just keeping yeah. the legacy going, you know, for his family and, you know, his kids and and making sure that, um you know, we continue and keep the journey going. And, um you know, let these boys know that we still out here and still, still pushing forward and, you know, still having a big impact for the culture, you know, even if, the, even if you don't see it. Oh yeah, no, you 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 guys are definitely doing your thing. Um, let's talk about um the your eight three five music, right? Um, obviously you're a rapper, entrepreneur, uh, talented songwriter. Um, talk about the eight three five music movement and what you kind of got going on right now. So yeah, you know, I I uh eight three five is actually started from you know some my 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 actual crew, you know, the guys in Texas, you know my my friends from high school. So we started that. And then I just turned that into the music. I always knew I wanted to expand and be my own boss and, 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 and take my experiences from back then. And then just, you know, um, incorporating it to the music and to the lifestyle and to the actually how, you know, we came up and, um, and transitioned from doing things in the streets to doing music. And, um, and that's kind of where it started at. So eight three five music, you know, of course, is ran by me and and my manager EJ. You know, it's, we're 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 a small company, but we're efficient and we do consulting, we do songwriting, you know, we do pr production, and um, and uh, we're just pushing forward and, and, until we get that right lucrative situation to to meet the right partner to take it to another level. But it's definitely a a, a baby of mine, and it's something that I see being as big as any other label that you know, that, that you could imagine. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a lot of artists right now and, and, uh, yeah, that's where it is. It's just, um, it's something that's very dear and very special to me and, um, expect a lot of big things from 835 music and, and, uh, any artist that's affiliated with it, a songwriter or a producer, and just know when you hear that 835 music, just expect greatness and, and, uh, timeless music. That's cause that's what it's about. Yeah, shout out to you, bro, and uh, you know, shout out to what you got going over there. And I could see, you know, just with a few, even just one big move, I think you guys could move up quick. Um, you definitely, you know, you have you leading it. You have a good team over there. Um, I know you guys are working with some talented young artists too, so that's dope. Um, talk about. I want you to explain to people um, the difference, you know, for you, like changing over, you know, to being maybe the face and like the rapper, the main person, um, to transition into being the songwriter for somebody else. Uh how how did that come about for you? And how do you feel about sometimes, you know, being maybe not the full face of what's going on with the music? So I just feel like I just feel like you know, for me it's like being married to the music. It's like as long as the vibe is right, as long as the mood is right as long as um you know i have that inspiration i'm good T to me it's more reflecting it it's it's always what the artists want yeah or just basically finding out um what's going on in people's lives or whoever i'm working with you know what's going on what how's your family doing what's going on it's more of a conversation and then that is actually what leads to it for me and i but i think for me as a writer i think it's 
it's kind of easy because I can pull from different situations amongst things that they may tell me or how they're feeling or what's going on in their life. I'm able to pull from different situations that maybe I've been, I've been in or experienced to be able to complete the mission. So as long as we have the right music and the right vibe, then, you know, it's, 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 it's endless. Cause I just feel like I can do any type of vibes or basically any type of music. And, you know, I got a team of people, you know, I got track Sanders. I got, yeah. you know, I'm working with Don Johnson right now. I'm working with some of the, the hottest people and the hottest, you know, um, people that's been around, but that's, more so up and coming and it's kind of the hottest in the meal with the new wave of what's going on right now. So it's just, for me, it's just staying in the mix and, and, and knowing my value and what I bring to the table and what makes me um, a successful individual and what makes Silk G Silk G. I can't worry about, you know, what nobody else is doing. I just kind of yeah. have to worry about what I, what I do best, you know, what I'm great in, and then just try to exceed in that. That's all I really try to do. I just try to keep it genuine. It's not forced. I don't go in the studio and say, I'm, you know, I'm gonna make this make this kind of song. Or sometimes, you know, we go in there with an idea or something, but it's more so more of a feeling to me. And 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 then that's what just makes it easy. Cause when I click, I click. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm sometimes I hear something and I might not, you know, react to it right away two weeks later or some or a week later I hear it and boom, I'm gone. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of mood and vibe, but it's really, it, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little bit. You know, it, it it's, it's a lot of, I put my 10,000 hours in bro. More than that. <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I was going to say, hell so, yeah. I, I just want to say that to the people, you know what I'm saying? Anything that you want to be great at, you got to try to, you know, at least put your 10,000 hours of sweat equity in. And no matter where you are at the end of the rainbow after that, at least you're able to be able to be successful in what you do in front of people because that's what they want to see. That's what it's about. It's not about what you play them. It's about what you can do right there in the moment or the opportunity that you're given in that moment. You know, so if you miss that moment of your opportunity, then that's it. Or offend the, per you know, offend the wrong person or not knowing who this person is in the industry and you're just treating anybody any type of way. And that may be your last chance, you know, before you even get a chance. So it's kind of, it, you know, it comes back to that respect level and always being mindful of, of you know, the 80 20 room. You know what I'm saying? Listen, 80 and try to speak 20, especially if you're in a room full of people that, you know, are higher than you and kind of more influenced. Just be a fly on the wall and uh, listen and learn. And I think that's key too. you know, relationships and just standing on business and being who you say you are. And then just, you know, common courtesy goes a long way. It don't yeah. it don't mm. cost nothing to say hi. And, you know what I'm saying? Be nice and friendly and respect everybody. And, you know what I'm saying? Keep it moving. Because the industry is it's, it's a business. It's, it's nothing else other than that. So you got to try to figure that out. And then you'll be in a better place. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I love how you said that too, right? Because, um, you know, obviously I have a bunch of huge artists on this platform, producers, um, very accomplished people, but then I also have, you know, underground artists series and, you know, I try to give game to those people coming up too. And I've always said this, bro, relationships in this business are probably the most important thing you could have, honestly. You know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, just... man. I mean, it's, 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 it's numero uno. It's numero uno. And it's your business. You know, it's, it's having it together as, as best as you can. Um, you know, having a strong team of people behind you and having your music registered, and, you know, copywritten and all the basic stuff you got, you got to try to, you know, have your basic things handled and, uh, um, you know, and, and, uh, and try to take it from there, you know, but if you don't do that, then you really don't stand to have a chance. So it's definitely key to keep those relationships and it, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt your ego or nothing to make a phone call to somebody and just say hello. If it's not at a big party or an event, you know, it, it don't take no money to call and check on nobody, you know. So that's what I do to a lot of people and shoot texts and to a lot of big dogs that I know in the industry and club owners and DJs or whoever all around the world. You know, I just show love and respect and check in on holidays and just, you know, to, just touch down with people, man, and just check in because money or not, you never know what somebody is going through, you know, in the day to day life. So just because you got money 
you know, more money and successful than somebody else don't mean you're no better or no bigger than nobody else. So just, you know, being mindful of that, you know, being about family and having some morals and values, you'll go a long way, man. Yeah, definitely, bro. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you this while you're on here, right? Because, you know, people check you out or they might see who, you, who you're with. Um, obviously, you've been in the game for a long time. If you just want to give everybody watching just like a quick rundown, right? Because they might hear, oh, you were on the radio back then. You're affiliated with rap a lot. Then they could see now, you know, you just dropped Luxury Living, which I loved. You snapped on that song. Snap. Man, I appreciate it. Man, if I appreciate you just want to give everyone, you know, just a quick rundown of kind of, you know, how you started to where you got to right now. So, so let's let's just start. We'll start. We'll start in about. We'll start in '94 with a group called The One Way out of Milwaukee. So they dropped the album. They were one of the first groups to actually drop an actual CD. Remember the CDs? Yeah. So when the CDs came, the one way dropped in 94, and then I got the recording. And then about 98, we transitioned from Milwaukee to Texas with a G to a key. That's where it started. So that's where it kind of all started. And you jump into the songwriting. I moved to St. Louis in about 2005, get to working with a lot of different artists and things down there, making a name for myself down there. Then transition, coming in back for it, starting about, Let's just say 2016 started 835 Music mm -hmm. and then hooked back up with G Money from a G to a key. And then I dropped a song called Popping Off in a video. It was actually produced by Paris Bueller. Paris Bueller is the oh. guy of music, guy of music from Chicago. He produced This Ain't What You Want for Lil Dirk. So he's kind of responsible for that drill, you know, that drill sound and that drill music. Um, Chop Squad and Chief Keith was also affiliated with Bandcamp. So I had Bueller and G Money on a song, and we did a, a political song when it was black. You know, when the when the police brutality back in 2017, and that's when I kind of turned up. I met Money Eyes, Fat Boy Guala, and then now that now now we start the resurgence. You know, yeah, yeah. when I met when I met Fat Boy Guala in 2017, he was transitioning from Money Eyes to turning into Guala. And then that's when we hooked up with Sounds, you know, your legendary producer from Milwaukee, songwriter, artist, BMW, Kenny. You know, he produced many hits. Usher loving this club. Usher and Beyonce. Ray Schremer, Nicki Minaj, Stole Simone, many other hits. So we linked up with Sounds. And then that's when we kind of started kind of the new way, what's going on right now with, you know, where we're kind of at right now. You know, he, he passed, Guala passed in 2021. But when we kind of linked up, and uh, kind of linked eight three five music and Fourth Coast, yeah, with his movement, and then that's when we kind of picked up a lot of steam and had a lot of stuff going, and um, uh, and um, uh, so I'm just, you know, carrying the torch from there. But that's that's kind of the, the layout, and you know, it's been so many people I worked with. You know, I I can't begin to talk and say that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A a, a lot of them over the years. So, but I, but um. But yeah, just shout out to, you know, everybody, you know, all the artists and producers and the songwriters and the people that I work with, man, because it's it's been an honor and a privilege every time I go in to just, you know, shoot for the stars. Whether it's your scar faces, you know, anybody that I've ever, you know, been around and been affiliated to just be in a room with, man. It's just your Mike Deans, you know what I mean? These guys oh, yeah. are look at look at these guys now, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's just it's amazing, you know. Um, but yeah, it's um it's definitely about extending the legacy and, 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 and keeping it going and staying fresh because you know, you see what I'm on right now. I'm 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 kinda I'm fresher and, and, and doper than ever now with the pen and with the songwriting. Yeah. See, I can do I can I can do songs too myself, but I can actually grab that pen and work with a track Sanders and, and make super hits with him or any other R and B artist that I can write. You know, I can actually write an R and B song without even knowing how to sing. So yeah, that 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 makes it a little different for me. Um, you know what I the, what I bring to the table. Like I said, you know, like I said, put me in the room, and I'm pretty much confident that I'm gonna bring what I'm gonna bring to the table because I've already worked with pretty much, you know, all these different artists from all these different tiers and times. Yeah. Um. 
So that's what makes me to stay relevant. Shout out to Sleep 4000 in St. Louis, you know, Chop Squad, my young hitter. He's out here with Dirk producing many platinum hits. And, man, there's so many people, man. G Money from a G to a key. HBN in Atlanta, Sammy Sam. Hell of a swag. My guy Grip, uh, my best friend, you know, he wrote. And is responsible for Lil Scrappy's first song. I got money in the bank. So he yeah, wrote that. Dope. Yeah, he's, you know, so a lot of people I'm connected with are still shooting for the stars and working with a lot of artists that's been around and, and just still trying to stay relevant and, and keep it pushing. You know, we're willing to work with anybody that, that wants to work with us. But, you know, the business have to, has to be right. The time has to be right. And the vibe has to be right. And uh, we're all in, you know. We definitely all in. So right now you either a part of the wave or you're gonna get waved over right now because we're pretty we we pretty confident over here in a, of 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 the music that's about to come in the videos. You know, shout out Track Sanders. He has a single out right now by uh with Mook G called Locked Up. I gotta send you that one too, so you can put that one in rotation. But a video is coming for that soon. And just a lot of just a lot of fresh new music and R and B and hip hop and uh you, you'll be here. Shout out to Brian from Day 26. You know, Tracks works with him. A lot of other people that are pretty much, you know, songwriters and producers that are in the camp that, um, you know, that can go with the best of them. Verse Simmons, you know, a lot of people we, shout out to my guy, Mac Tree, independent artist in Atlanta. He makes a lot of dope. Uh, not sure if you heard of my boy, Mac Tree. Out of yeah, I think I know who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, my God. So it's a lot of people. My guy Cap One out of Atlanta out of Atlanta. He's from Chicago. A lot of people that I'm kind of solid with and know that are solid that uh started in music but are entrepreneurs now and still doing music, but they doing a lot of other things, you know what I mean? To get money and stay relevant, being bosses and entrepreneurs and not just putting yourself in a box. You know what I mean? Like me, yeah. you know, I told you I work for yeah. Audi. So I'm not hiding nothing about myself. I'm me. You know what I mean? Yeah, which so. I think that's dope, right? Because you're open about, you know, your story, your success, what you've been through, uh, the grind you're on right now. Um, talk about, you know, you being an entrepreneur right now with uh, 835 Music. What are you exactly looking for? What's your team looking for uh, when it comes to scouting out artists? Well, that's a that's a great question. I appreciate that question. It's somebody who's ready to put the sweat equity in, that believes in themselves, that doesn't expect to just have somebody fund their career and not bring nothing to the table. Uh, it's basically that that that's the that's the part right there. Just having the passion and the drive and the know how and the independence and just the ability to get things done without being babysitted. Um, yeah, that's I key. Yeah, and I, I, think, I, I, I think br I think bringing something to the table instead of coming with, you know, with the handout for an independent, you know, for an independent label. When the check comes, that's a different story. You know, um, but just somebody who's very passionate about what they're doing and that, that wants to make an impact in music and not just be kind of like a fly by night or a fad. Um, are you really serious? Have you really decided or do you know your identity as an individual and what you're going to bring to the, to the industry and make yourself different, you know, in the, in the game, you know, there's so many, so many songs getting consumed and so much music and, you know, it's kind of, it's way different now, you know, it's marketing, it's TikTok, it's, it's different things now, but do you want to be a, a long time artist or do you want to be a catch artist with a quick TikTok run that, that won't last two months? Yeah, no, I get exactly what you're saying. And I, I you're a good person to ask this question, right? Because uh, it's not every day where you get to talk to someone who's running their own label. Um, so when you're at the table, right, and you're making decisions on the artist, are you looking more analytic? Because I know a lot of people are working this way. Are you looking more analytics? Or are you still the old school, the the feel, the music, and the and the artist? You got to bring something new. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to be able to outdo me when it's time to create. Yeah. You get what I mean? That's, yeah. that's what it's about. 
if you can if you can if you can go neck and neck with with, with what we doing or the music we putting on the table whether I plus pray whether I plus play right here on this or whether we just go ahead and go ahead and do something from the scratch and we just going to shoot jumpers in the gym and see if you really about that life you know what i mean <laughs> yeah cuz that's what that's what it's really about you know what i mean but I, I i take that to everything i try to take that mentality into everything that i do and i think that's what makes me successful whether i'm on a song with whoever i'm on a song with whatever it's kind of about i'm always going to bring me to the table and figure out what I do best or try to marry the beat, marry the music. And I think that's that's the most important. Are you rapping or singing or are you marrying the music? Yeah, no, that, that's- Are you bringing better, something yeah. to the table? Are you being you? Long as you're being you and you're being authentic, then you're bringing something to the table, whether anybody has an opinion or not, because music is always going to be opinion-based. You know, what you- what you don't like, somebody's going to love. What you hate, somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody loves. So it, it's kind of, it's always selective. So, you know, you can't get upset if somebody don't like a certain song or nobody's perfect in this. You know, if Michael Jackson isn't perfect, nobody's perfect. So that, that's facts. That's kind of yeah. what it's about. It's a, it's definitely analytics is kind of what, what's messed up the game. You know, it's, I agree. Cause it's kind of, it's sad. It's sad. There's no artist development. You know, there's no there's no caring anymore. They want to latch their self into whatever the hottest and they're just going to, you know, pump that up. And it's already going to be pumped up to a, la a level that they really didn't need the label. They just reached out because they know they're going to monopolize, and, you know, get people to sign their lives away because they're young and they're hungry for, the, you know, the little that little check they're going to wave in their face. Yeah. So you definitely have to be a serious artist, you know, that's to anybody, not just to me or what I'm looking for. Um, I think that's that's for anybody. I think you just need to be look at Andre 3000, whether you like it or not. You know, he he sold like what, 26,000 copies of a flute album. Yeah. So yeah. he brought something different to the table and outsold almost 30 artists, they said. So who cares? Right. Somebody else hates it. Somebody loves it. So just do you. Um, no, I, I agree with that. Um, so obviously we're coming to the end of the year. Um, talk about uh, what's next for you. What's next for the label? What's coming up in uh, 2024? What, what do you expect out of next year for you guys? Man, it's looking real good right now, man. Um, so I know I'm, I'm actually been working on this for a while, but I know I'm going to drop. I don't know if it's going to be a mixtape. It's probably going to be just an EP. Uh, it's going to be called The Life of Silk G. I'm going to put out some songs um, with me and my brother that passed away, Money Eyes. You know, I was going to do a whole project, but I may just do a few songs and kind of just let that lead. I think that's why I just dropped the Luxury Living song and video as a tribute, you know, to just keep his legacy and, his, and, and, and you know, the memory alive and just to let people know because his murder is still unsolved you know so yeah we're still looking for justice for his wife and kids and you know that's number one but it was just more so about not sitting on this music that's in the computer and um letting the world know and i had to catch bmw kenny when i could catch him you know because he's yeah. flying around and doing this thing and so i call him and we got the video done and you know i got with his wife and kids and I was able to get that. So I'm definitely working on that life of Silk G and that's going to be real. That's going to be something real special um, because that's just all me. It's going to be me featuring, but that's going to be a special project because that's just going to be and showcase what I do. And then I'm just falling back on the song right now. I'm excited about what Track Sanders, dope R&B artist. He has some gospel awards too, so he's critically acclaimed. But uh, we've been working on his album. Shout out to Don. Down the jeweler, phenomenal producer, and um, and uh, Jr. Scales, another another one of the dudes in the crew. He has a couple artists, my P, Destiny Lynn. He's working with, so just working with some talented people right now, man. Keeping myself fresh, young, and in the mix, and uh, so be on the lookout for Track Sanders. He's definitely next with his album. And got a couple songs on there. We did another song called Where She At Though. We're shooting a video to that. So I'm excited about that. That's coming up. So that's going to be one of the songs that we did together that we're going to drop. 
uh, song in the video too. Pretty sure that's probably going to be on his album. If not, it's going to be on something else. So yeah, very I excited about that. Yeah, I can't wait to hear that shit. And, you know, working with a lot of other people too, man. I ain't going to really say no names. Shout out to my guy Punch. He's Ro Timmy manager. You know, he's somebody that I, you know, talk to and get a lot of ideas from and just support from and just be just just tap in man just just be looking because because we're working so i'm just excited about the opportunity to come on the podcast and let people know who i am and, and you know and just uh be on the lookout for 835 music you know bad guys track sanders don johnson you know hbn in atlanta sleep 4000 in st louis you know that's pretty much the team and um we're we're um you're hungry. We're blessed and blessed and highly favored. Oh, extremely hungry. Yeah, extremely hungry. Definitely and, and, blessed and, and highly favored. I was gonna say yeah, that. definitely. Yeah, and yeah. congrats to you. You know, on your you know endeavors and in your family and your wife. You know, I know you got some in the oven. So proud of you it's, for that. It's coming, yeah. You know, we just living, man. We living and we blessed and. You know, loving the family. Christmas coming. You see, I'm in the spirit already. The wife. Yeah, hell yeah. You got the fly shit going on. Got back the tree. There. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I'm, 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 I'm. I, I was going to the studio, but I kept it real personal for you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you know that, bro. I kept it real personal for you, bro. I, I said I had to, I had to, I had to go on with time. I had to let people know it was really real, man. They didn't, they didn't know, they didn't know your boy had plugs out in L.A. They thought, they thought, yeah. <laughs> They were sleeping. They, they, on they thought. They thought. They thought it was a game, Tom. You better tell them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right, bro. But like I was saying, bro. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the interview, I want to thank you for coming on, bro. Uh, you've been a stand up guy, stand up businessman. Uh, I really enjoy what you're doing at the label. Um, you know your resume is up there with the best of them. Uh, from rap a lot to what you got doing on now. Uh, if there's anything else you want to say to anyone listening or any shout outs you want to make, the mic's yours. Yeah, man, just shout out to man, just shout out to everybody, man. You know, it's crazy times we living in right now, man. So whatever you're doing out there, man, just keep you know staying focused and you know keep working hard at it, man. As long as you give yourself an opportunity, you know, sky's the limit. Just don't give up. And, uh, you know, man, just shout out to the team, man. Anybody I'm working with, man, musically, man, you know, I'm I'm, I'm excited, man. You know, my heart is in the right place. And let's just keep turning up, you know, Track Sanders, Don. Man, let's just keep going hard. Shout out to Grip HBN in Atlanta. Shout out to you, you know, what you're doing, man. And, you know, just being a humble guy and, and talking to and and, you know, just using your platform and using your voice to, you know, give people an opportunity to speak, whether they're great, you know, your hit boys or wh whoever you've interviewed, you know, from the best of the best to, you know, people like me who a lot of people know, but, you know, maybe a lot of people don't actually know, you know, to the masses level. So, but that's been around, and, you know, some of the best of the best and it's still out here swinging away. So, no, nah, man, it's, it's a privilege and an opportunity, man. Um, you know, to come on here and speak to the people. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Holiday season, so feeling feeling real good. Beautiful music coming soon. More videos, more wave. You know, I got songs out there on iTunes. You know, the plug is out. Got girls out featuring me and G Money from a G to a key. You got your luxury living that's available right now on all your platforms. So you can watch the video on that. YouTube. Yeah, yeah Silk, G, Silk G, Fat Boy Guala featuring BMW Kenny, Luxury Living, produced by Darrell Ride Out. And shout out to him and Business Boy. They're out there in LA making major moves, man, with all your top artists out there that are working with, you know, everybody in the industry. So shout out Rail. I'm sure we'll have some more heat coming. You know, we're locked in. He's a Milwaukee music goat. Uh, so yeah, man, just tapped into the city and the culture and excited about the new wave of Milwaukee artists and, you know, my P and it's a lot of people out here, man, Mook G and different artists in Milwaukee right now. It's kind of a different wave with the city. Chicken P just got signed. So, you know, shout out to Blackout, all the artists over there, H1 The Hook, Guapo Chapo, Looney Baby, 54 Baby Trey. 
So Milwaukee is, you know, up and coming, man. And it's, it's an exciting time to be around, but you know, I'm pretty much a little bit everywhere. So we're just um, trying to keep pushing our culture forward, man. And just um, plugging away one day at a time, man. Just trying to be great every day. Just being blessed and, and giving yourself a chance, man. Just staying out here and staying busy and out the way is key, you know, no matter where you are. So we locked in with you. You know, when we get out to L.A., I'm sure me and Trax will get to coming out there trying to shoot a visual out there soon. So, you know, me and you going to link up to another level anyway coming soon. You know, I got to touch down with some people down there in L.A., man. So just excited about what's in store and what's to come. You know, yeah, more, no, more so. More yeah, no so doubt, bro. Than, yeah, no doubt. And, um, yeah, I wish you blessings, bro. Uh, obviously, you know, I, people, people can find me. Yeah, I, just, I didn't mean to cut you off, bro. You good? My apologies. But, you know, you can follow me on, you know, Instagram and pretty much tap in and get a hold to me, either me or EJ. So, you know, that that's pretty much what it is. Silk G835 Music uh, with a K. So that's S I L K G eight three five M U S I K, and uh, that's how you tap in with me, man. Just touch down with me, man. We're we're looking to work with people, and like you said, man, you got a budget, big or small, let's do it. You want a feature? I'll knock it out for you in no time. But you know, to get Silk G on the song or to work with me, it's 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 definitely um, the business has to be right. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you know, definitely worth it though too. Oh yeah, you gonna you know you know you know we gonna knock it out the park. We gonna give you what you want. So, but yeah, we gotta you know setting a new standard, man. I think artists need to just take the independence back. It's kind of going back to that kind of hand in hand, man. It's finding the fan base and finding your crowd and bringing them to you. And then I think that that's kind of what'll change. You know what's kind of going on today because you know we're. You, you you don't know what a stream really is. You don't, you know, it's it's a whole different ball game right now. I think I think more so getting back to the traditional, you know what Nipsey did, man. He hit him with that hundred dollar CD. You may not can't do a CD, but you kind of gotta go back to direct to consumer, man. That's kind of that's kind of the wave that I think we gonna we gonna be trying to figure out over here at eight three five music. Let me put this one ahead. Yeah, hell so, yeah, you gotta show them off right yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, so y'all know it's real. Hell yeah. But that's what we're that's what we're focused on, you know. Um trying to get that direct to consumer base. You know, I just had a successful show, Silk G and Friends back in September, you know, featuring H one, Track Sanders, Jermaine Rideout. He's a uh you know, he plays piano as a band, but he's been on Justin Bieber and Usher, you know, he's worked with a lot of people, so I put on that show, you know, just to put on for Milwaukee. And it'll be a Silk G and Friends part two coming probably March of 2024. And, uh, yeah, man, we just, like I say, we're just pushing the culture forward. So very excited about that. I had a successful event as a promoter. That was kind of my first one on that scale. And, um, yeah, more events like that. You know, maybe we do a Silk G and, 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 and Tom Bob in L.A., you know what Hell I mean? Oh, yeah, that'd be dope. And do a show out there, you know what I mean, and um, oh, yeah, and work together and, and do it like that. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm more so on right now. And then you know, just continuing to be an artist. But the songwriting is a big thing for me right now. You know what I'm saying? I I actually may even want to try to take a position at a label, you know, as like a head of an A and R or something like that. If, if if any label execs or anybody out there looking, man, I'm definitely. Bona fide, certified, and qualified for sure. I put the work in, and I know a lot of people and have a lot of relationships, and I know I could do justice to, um, you know, one of these big labels bringing people in of the culture and with the experience to be able to hone the talent that already have the relationships and understandings with the the people on the ground, the producers that's you know actually out here and active, and and I think that'll that'll take music and shift it back into a positive direction of just being pure and being, um, you know, different, bringing, bringing something new to the table and not just everybody chasing the same swag or the same lane, or, you know, the same sauce or whatever you want to call it, drip, or whatever it is that you call it, you know, the same um, sound for sure. 
<laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely sick of that. So we're either going to just be authentic and just be genuine and just, you know, be you, but bring something new to the table, you know, and be creative in, in whatever you are. Find out what you are as an artist and what you bring to the table and just hone in on that. And that's just my, you know, that's kind of the key message for me, man. Just do that and you'll be straight. But I appreciate the opportunity, man. I'm looking forward to us continuing to work together, man. And I think, you know, we can do something big, definitely out there, even here, out there in L.A. and, and, and kind of have a platform and just get with some other people, man, to just expand on bringing more like-minded people to the table. Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, I, yeah, uh, I can't wait to work with you in the future. Like I said earlier, and keep saying, bro, I, I do love what you got going on. Um, you know, I really think um, you got your head in the right place. And, you know, obviously the relationships, I think the label is really going to take off. And, uh, you know, I wish you a really blessed 2024. Enjoy the holidays with your family, bro. And uh, stay safe, all right? I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Tom, man. We'll be talking soon, man. And shout out to anybody watching, man, all over the world. We appreciate you, man. 835 Music, Silk G, Long Live Fat Boy Guala. We out.